Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Blender tutorial by me because apparently this channel is now a Blender tutorial channel, I don't know how that happened. Anyways, today we will be making this completely 100% procedural canyon thing. Uh, I know my screen is stuttering a little bit, that's because of my recording software, the actual thing renders completely fine real-time EV. Uh, it's procedural, so we can change the W, which changes the... The, the seed, which makes a new canyon. Then we can also change the scale, so we can make it, for example, a lot. I mean, that that's a little too extreme, but we can make it be, have less variation, like this, for example. Or we can also uh, change the roughness, if that's the kind of canyon you want, I, I don't know. And a really interesting thing about this is that we can also Oh, wait, that's a little too much. Uh, we can also uh, change the number of vertices which make this canyon up. So you can go from like 0 to as many as we want. And we can also change the size of the canyon this way. And I realize it doesn't look very good here because of the specific settings I chose right now. But trust me, this, this can make some pretty cool looking canyons. Anyways, let's get started making this file, new, general. So this would be, it's not a very advanced tutorial. You just need to know how to like move around, place stuff in, and you should have a little bit of experience with shader nodes. You can know absolutely nothing about geometry nodes and still follow along. So what we have to do is just get whatever, and we can just get like a, I don't know, a cube if we want. Tab, delete all the vertices. We don't need it. We just need the object up here. That That's all. And now what we do is we split our screen and we go to geometry nodes where we will create a new geometry node and here we can just disconnect this we don't we don't need this and instead what we do is we get a grid which i will now place over here and we can go into up here we can go into wireframe mode to see the exact number of vertices in our grid so i can increase it over here and then decrease it for our purposes, it's just much more convenient to have the same value for the X and the Y. So we can connect them both up to this single value node. And now we can just do this to increase and decrease the resolution of our grid. Uh, now that we have that, this will be like the base which we will be distorting in order to create our canyon out of this. So every single vertex here, uh, vertex here we're just going to be moving up and down to create a canyon and then, we, then we're going to be shading it. If you've already seen my hexagonal world tutorial, it's going to be very similar to that. You can watch that video and you will still be able to do this. Um, I'm just really enjoying creating procedural worlds with geometry nodes right now. That's why I'm making this similar kind of thing. So what we do, just like the old tutorial, we set position over here. So now this is the offset of our thing. We can move it around like this. And I'm going to set that to zero. And we are going to control this using a noise texture. Like so. And as you can see, that doesn't really work. We'll come back to it. First, we'll set it to 4D. So we also have a seed. So we can randomize our thing. And we can set the scale down. So see, that, that already looks like some sort of terrain in a weird way. But what we're doing wrong here is we are taking the output and we are just applying it to all the dimensions, all the axes. What we're supposed to do is only apply it to the Z axis. So we take a combine X, Y, Z, and we take the color of the factor, it doesn't matter. We take it only for the Z, and then we combine this vector with here. And now look at that, it's so much better. We can even make the scale, oh, that's not the scale. We can make the scale a little more pronounced. Right, so now that we have this, we have the scale going into a combine X, Y, Z at the Z, this into a set position, which takes the grid and sets it its position with an offset, and that offset is the noise texture, but only on the Z axis. Great. Now what we do, much like the previous uh, tutorial on this channel, just we map range it, it's not that hard. So what we do is the from minimum will be zero, uh, from maximum will be one. So we are taking an input zero to one. And now we will assign it to an output, 
of let's say negative one to one. Oh, that that's an interesting result. This goes here, and then this is combined over here. It's a very subtle difference, but we didn't get everything wrong. So now. Uh, the, so 0 to 1 is basically a noise texture is outputting 0 to 1 and then we're mapping it onto a different scale which is negative 1 to 1 so that it goes up and down more and here we can make it any other value all we have to do is again get a value node and get a math node then we multiply the value with negative 1 so for the maximum we take the value as it is and for the minimum, we take the value multiplied by negative one so that it still averages out at our origin. And then when we change this, we can change basically the amplitude of our, of our canyons in a way. Right, so now we have this. We can, we can control the resolution of our grid. We can control the amplitude of our displacement. We can control how much, like what our seed is and what the scale of the displacement is. Most of this stuff we could already just do with like a normal displace modifier, right? Uh, over here, displace modifier, we could have done that. Why are we doing it here in geometry nodes in such a convoluted way? The answer is because we want to change something over here between the combine and the map range. All we have to do is get a clamp node. Why? Because canyons, they don't have peaks like mountains. Also, I'm gonna increase the resolution a little bit so it's easier to work with like easier to see so they don't have these smooth peaks like this what they have is a flat top which is why we have this clamp node over here which goes between the map range and the combine xyz and right now it's clamping to the bottom it's making a minimum that's not what we want we want um so the maximum wait so the minimum can go as low as you know whatever negative thousand doesn't matter we're not gonna go that down anyways the maximum on the other hand right now it's one but if we bring it closer we can we can cut off the top of our peaks also i'm gonna go in solid view mode and that's too little so we simply do this and you know what that looks around all right to me so right now this is way too smooth like canyons shouldn't be this smooth so we're going to go back to our noise texture and just increase the roughness. Mm, it still isn't looking correct. I think we increase the detail. Yeah, I think that, that's the correct thing to do. Increase the detail. Increase the roughness. Uh, it's lagging a little bit. So I'm going to reduce this down to maybe not 50, maybe like 100. So it's a little lighter on my CPU. Oh yeah, uh, another thing you have to do is right before the output, just um, that shade smooth. So it's a le little easier to like imagine this as a canyon even before shading. And you know what? This honestly, this, this looks fine to me. That this is perfectly acceptable as a canyon. Maybe I can decrease the scale a little bit. Now that, that's kind of a cool shape for a canyon. I'm going to increase it like to three. Now oh, that looks like a interesting shape and that's our canyon maker basically made that's the tutorial ended now we just have to shade it which is much easier again we're going to be using the exact same thing we used last time for my hexagonal world tutorial where we're going to shade it using the height instead there's going to be a, a few changes first of all let's just set it to something anything it's not working you can see it's not changing the color why is that because we have to go back to geometry nodes. And anyway, here, just after this and before this, it could be after set shade smooth or it could be before set shade smooth. Uh, what you have to do is get a set material. I'll place it down over here and select the material we made earlier. And we have to go to this. <laughs> I forgot we had to go to the material preview. It happens to the best of us. So after you have it over here for the shading, uh, I disconnected this, you can reconnect this if you want. Uh, you get a texture coordinate node. 
what you do with it is you look at the generated or you can look at like any of them doesn't really matter i think object would be ideal because then it, it sticks with the mesh even if you move the mesh around so i'm gonna go with object and what you do with object is you separate the x y z and you look at the z and now here we have this kind of range but it's not like a good range to work with because you know if, if i put a color ramp down here and i want this to go from you know anything like red to let's say blue it's not really doing that it's not a good color ramp to use so instead so after you get the z from the separate xyz what you do is you put in a map range and make sure it goes from minimum so it goes to minimum zero to maximum one and for these values, the minimum and the maximum the input is, we will have to figure that out. And to do that, what we do is we basically just like move them around till the top is as white as Blender can make it. And the bottom is as black as Blender can make it. And sometimes this is hard to do. Yeah, I think I have a pretty good balance over there. So like the points near the bottom are black and the points at the very top are white. So that gives us a good range. Or when we use a color ramp, then nothing's going to happen because the color ramp does the same thing from black to white. But if, for example, I set the, the, the start to be red and the end to, you know, also be red, and then I have a blue in the middle, Uh, what you might want to do while picking your colors for your canyon is put the principal bstf in between so that you don't need this then so that you can actually see some lights and shadows and stuff while you're figuring, figuring your colors out which you know it helps a little bit even oh you can turn your roughness up and that also helps a little bit and you can continue figuring out your colors So I'm happy with the colors I have right now. And what I do, actually, you know what? I'm not happy with this color. I'm going to change it slightly, just slightly other way around. Yeah, there. Now I'm happy with all of the colors I have. Now comes the interesting part. So you see how right now there's no blending between the colors at all. It's straight lines. And what we will do is after this map range, we will take a mix that's a make, not a mix. A mix RGB. And we're going to mix it with a noise texture, obviously. Everyone's favorite texture, noise texture. And what that does is actually we should probably take the factor of this. I just think that would make more sense. And what that does is absolutely ruin everything. But then you set the scale to be lower and things will start to go where they're supposed to. Uh, make the detail really high, increase the roughness. And look, it now kind of looks like sandy. Which is, canyons are made out of sand. Yes, that is correct. And we have a little bit of blending going on between those. We can set it to be the full preview mode and we can just have a light actually you know what no we'll have a sun r x 45 r z 45 and we can set the sun to be like 10 in strength that's a little too much we can set it to be five and then we have we have such a nice canyon and we can always just you know mess around with the noise texture maybe add a little bit of distortion that's and like reduce the scale maybe yeah that looks nice that looks like a good canyon now i feel like this beige color is just taking up too much so i'm going to reduce it that's not reducing it that's increasing it i'm going to reduce it this way just so we have some more colors so even with our map range, this is basically where all of our colors are concentrated. But that, that's all right. It, it looks good enough. Now, for the final thing we can do to make this just look that much better 
is simply add a bump bump node so we can have some normal stuff for which uh, no not white noise no no that's not the one we need we just need the normal noise which goes over here into the height and what that does is give it some basically fake lighting data of that it looks horrible i'm gonna set it down to this so it's less noticeable and then i'm gonna set the scale way up and the detail up the roughness you know we can we can keep the roughness slightly down if we want that wait i'm gonna set the strength a little bit higher and then i'm gonna just play around with the roughness till i find the sweet spot there it is and now we can set the scale back down and look at that that looks like a canyon like that is a good canyon to me i yeah look at look at this that's some interesting you know what i'm gonna set the scale down ah, actually i'm gonna set this scale up and then this scale down maybe this yes that's that's perfect that's a good canyon mm, and you know what at this point we might even be able to change this to like something else like linear or something and then mess around with the panels again and that should give us a little bit more blending it looks about the same oh, it doesn't really matter you can set it back to constant and now we are almost done there's only one thing left to do and it's to go back to our geometry node editor and just connect all the inputs up because that just makes life easier in general so for starters what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect that up remember that was at 100 connect this over here go to this and just set that to be 100 so now the input is being taken from here we can you know control the number of vertices we want making up our mesh i'm going to set it back to 100 then what else we can do is we can take the w that's the w that's the seed over here so we can change the look of a canyon into something completely different because it's procedural we can just do that and we can also take the scale you know what all of this does you, you made this and oh that was wrong thing to press and then this value we can also connect i forgot what that value was for oh. I forgot what that value was for, but I guess we will find out. That was the scale. Yeah, I think this looks nice, whatever scale this is. Uh, what else can we connect from over here? So we have the seed, the scale in, in terms of the how much stuff is going on. And then we have the scale in terms of the how much stuff is going up and down. And we have the number of vertices i think that's it oh yeah yeah the other thing we can do is we can also just connect these up so we can uh take one of these connect it to both of these and then connect this like that i'm bad at connecting things connect this like that and now we can change the size of our thing we can infinitely generate more canyons as many as we want Obviously, the bigger we make it, the less vertices each individual canyon has because if we go back into wireframe mode, uh, the vertices they scale with the they scale with the mesh itself. So you don't get more vertices for making a bigger thing. So the smaller you make it, the more detail it will have, and the bigger you make it, the less detail it will have. But then you can just increase the number of vertices from up here. So I'm gonna set all of that back to whatever it was. This is what it was. And there you have a canyon. You can use it for whatever you want. It's yours to keep. And there, that's like 20 minutes of your life gone. But now you have a cool canyon in Blender. Uh, I don't have an outro. You can like do whatever you want. Go away, uh, go to my channel, subscribe, I, I don't know.